Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another competitive Brawl Stars video. So today you guys guessed it, you know, I don't know if it was obvious by the thumbnail, the title, or maybe the fact that this is the only team we've played in the last two years basically, but we are back with another match versus Luminosity. You know, I kind of look a lot different than the person on the screen right now. I guess it's like a locked in version of me, but this was me literally a week ago. There's Patchy. But this is a very big patch. We have to beat these guys or else our year is over. We need to 100% win. So let's get into the game. Let's show you guys everything that happened. Now, I just made a video about how Kit the Cat is like the best brawler in the game. Well, LG decided, you know, they're going to let me play him. So I got to play Kit the Cat. We have Zara on Sprout, which he is very well known for. And then we have Sans on Draco, which this was the last patch. So Draco was by far the best brawler in the game. Now I'm going to go invis, go up and just immediately die. You know, best player ever. You know, this is the it's, that's exactly how you want to start a match of the most importance all year is by going up and throwing the first round. So my teammates weren't very happy about that. I told them, hey, this is still winnable. So do your best. The issue with Draco on this map, as you guys could tell, is it's knockout. And knockout, there's a lot of throwers. There's Kit. So you can see the other team has Byron, Larry, and RT. Very, you know, typical knockout comp. We have Sprout and Kit, you know, fairly typical. And then we just have a dragon. So, like, it's a good comp, but it's, like, it's just weird. It's just not very, you know, knockout base. Not very normal for, not for knockout. Now... They do still kind of have a chance here. Zar does need to get a wall, and he's not able to get it until it's too late. He goes down. Sands goes down. That round is my fault. We are down 1-0. Now, we really need to win this set because set one is like, you know, it's pretty important. You win set one, you're feeling good. Everyone's happy, all that stuff. Zar puts down a wall to get him some position. It really wasn't the greatest wall, to be honest. He didn't really block anything. Then Sands draw, uh, goes in a dragon form. Zar puts down a wall, so he completely messes up Sands' push. And we're kind of like out of sorts right now. Like, I threw the first round. I jump on Sands there because I was afraid he was going to die. I kind of waste my jump. And now we're, you know, we're just wasting walls, wasting jumps, wasting dragon form supers. But we settle down. We have a couple coaches, and they're in the voice call saying, hey, just wait this out. Let's get to end game, whatever. Cat gets super, which I don't love this about a lot of brawlers, but Cat gets super just by, you know, standing around and existing. So I'm just waiting for my super. And then Draco gets super by getting hit. So I'm just standing there waiting to get my super. Sans is just getting hit, waiting to get his super. And we have a sprout. So then Zar puts down a really crazy wall. He's doing some really great stuff. I think he hits like, what, four straight shots that just was over there. And then I jump on Sans's back. We get, a, you know, a couple free kills. And that round was really well played at the end. So then once that happens, we kind of realize, we kind of lock in. We're like, okay, we need to totally lock in and just wait till end game. And you know, that might not make the best YouTube content, but that's where we're at right now. So Sans is just trying to get hit by them, but also not die at the same time. So when you have a brawler such as Draco and he gets passive super just by getting hit, what you want is for a brawler that, that currently has super. So on the screen right now, you guys can see Patchy has super. We want Patchy to hit Sans. So Patchy, he's a very smart player. He's not going to hit Sans. Patchy is, you know, he's known for his IQ. Like, he's just not feeding super. He's, he's smarter than that. Now, Chino, on the other hand, he doesn't have super. So him hitting the Draco does give some value. So eventually, I believe Chino does just end up hitting the Draco. Um, and then getting his own super. But what that does is feed our super. And what you guys can see, actually, no one hits Draco. Zar puts a hypercharge wall, and then we just start throwing on him. And it's like, what can they really do? Zar's hitting every shot. Like I said, Zar is really known for Sprout. I'm hitting my thrower shots on the back of Draco. And that's a, I want to say really easy, but it was a very complicated and then turned into easy game one. Now going into game two, similar strategy. So what we tried to do this round was kind of like, we knew that they were going to try and get on our lane because they won round one when we were both on the same lane. So what we decided was to go their side this time so that they couldn't, you know, do anything to us because they were going to go on our side. So Zar gets very low. I'm trying to protect him and we just need to get some positioning in the bush. They're completely just ignoring Sans. But the thing with Sans is if he goes a little bit too close, he's just going to end up dying. So Sans is literally just walking around the map like Sans is right beside them. And like he's one tile away from hitting them and they're just not shooting like, dude, he's right there. He's a dragon. He's supposed to be like the best brawler hit him. So Chino finally gets his hit, and I think their strategy is just wait until the end and don't hit Sans. I think that's what they're trying to do. And to be honest, I don't see what else they could do. We had a really nasty draft this map. 
Draft is obviously such a big part of the game right now with the meta not being very skilled. I jump on Sans' is back, and here we go. So Patchy's doing a great job of like kind of getting some attention on himself, but there's just nothing that these guys can do. I mean, there's Sprout walled off. There's a cat on a dragon's back healing him. Then there's just a dragon, you know, being a dragon. And I'm just throwing 3,000, you know, damage shots around. So now we match them again because now Sans is close-ish to super. I have my jump and Zar has hypercharge. So we're okay matching them. But we also know at the same time, we got to wait till end game. We can't rush anything unless we know 100% we're going to get a kill. I jump on Sans there just to make sure he doesn't go down and he's going to push forward a little bit. So I don't really know where their strategy went here. I guess because they're one game away from losing that they just decided to shoot Sans, but they charged some of Sans's super there. And I mean, they, they're not shooting him anymore, but they did charge a good chunk of it. Sans is kind of walking around. He's doing his thing. He's existing. He's doing whatever. Um, and we're all kind of just waiting. I'm waiting to get my super. I think about sneaking on Charles here. I end up not doing it. I think I could have committed and gotten the kill, to be honest. But I was playing it safe. And it's better I play it safe in this situation. Because Zara is his hypercharge again. He's going to wall off. Really good jump, actually, there. Or super sorry by Chino. But he doesn't get any hits on it. Patchy does a really good job of wasting as much ammo as he can of ours as possible. But... There's just nothing these guys can do with this set. This is a really easy set for us. I don't know why it looks so different right now than I do over there. It's like two totally different people, but whatever. So let's move on to set two and let's keep it rolling. Now going into the next set, we are the top team here. So we're the blue team. We have Rosa, Jesse, and Cord, and they have Crow, Jackie, and Angelo. So I actually don't hate their comp. It's a comp that they're fairly comfortable with. I think the Angelo kind of doesn't fit with them. But as you guys can see, we walk forward and we scored in 15 seconds. And if you guys are a fan of STMN, if you guys are a fan of LG, if you guys are a fan of NA or just Brawl Stars competitive in general, you guys know we suck at Brawl Ball. And LG is like the greatest Brawl Ball team in the world. Obviously, you know, Brawl Ball doesn't usually go our way when we face them. But I do like our chances here because we have a nice comp. I think I overheated a little bit and tried to go for a goal when I could have just killed Chino over there and then gotten good positioning. Then Zar goes for a goal. He gets slowed, so he had a free goal, but he messed it up. So, like, that's just our average, you know, Brawl Ball play right there is, like, I overheated when I thought I could have scored. I don't score. Then Zar walks up thinking he can score. He doesn't score. Now we have a 3v1, so I pop hypercharge thinking I can score. And then again, Chino saves the day. So it's just like we had, what, like two, three scoring opportunities or just plays in general that we messed up. But Charles is going to completely waste his hypercharge. I don't want this to go unnoticed. Sans is just going absolutely ballistic with the Jesse. Like he is actually just spawn trapping, going crazy. He already had a hypercharge. He's close to another one. So he's doing his thing. I'm out of Rosa slows and Rosa kind of sucks when you're out of Rosa slows. So... I'm, you know, just doing my best over here. They move the ball over to the other side, but we have Zar there ready. Charles tries to clear the ball, but it's too late. I got the ball. I'm saying body block. I pass it forward. We actually almost mess up a fourth goal, but we end up with the ball in the net, and that's going to be a 1-0 lead in this set for us. Now, going into the next game, they try and switch it up and have a different strategy. I get solo slowed right off the start, but again, Sands is just tapping and going crazy. Zar's doing a really good job of applying pressure. He goes for the goal here. It was definitely the right play. Because I roasted him for it after and he said it was the right play. And then I looked back and it was the right play. But he just messed it up. He didn't. He just didn't jump on the ball. And then I try and walk it in. I walk it in with, like, I died. I had no HP. I died. But I managed to get the ball in the net. So there's one good raw ball play out of us at least. Um, and again, we have a one nothing lead super fast. So I try and slow someone so that Sans can get positioning with his turret. He kind of wastes his turret there. It's not like a waste, but it's just in a weird spot. Um, and Patchy's on one HP, Charles is on one HP, I go down, Patchy makes a couple nice plays over there, and Zar isn't gonna get Patchy in the cord realm because he's gonna lose that. Um, but I mean, the Jesse turret is just getting so much value. Sans comes up with the hypercharged Jesse, Zar's doing a ton of damage, he gets that kill, we, you know, get the ball in the net, and that's gonna be a pretty quick set. Like, we do not normally win Brawl Ball like that, so I mean, that is kind of... We had a good draft. Let's just say that. We had a really nice draft, a really good game plan, and we executed it perfectly. Now, getting into Heist, this is one of the more iconic Brawl Esports moments in the last, you know, couple of years. Charles, bro, what are you doing? Where is the jump pad, man? The fact that he sits under that tornado with the bang emo is just, like, unreal. Now, I argue with Patchy about this all the time. If they had the jump pad, I think we still do have comp. 
I wanted to go a Gale comp in monthly finals because I thought that was the best way to kind of approach this map given the normal bands. We never won a set. We lost every set we played with it. So we kind of threw that strategy in the trash and I was really pushing hard for it. And we had a really good comp into their comp. Like we have Chuck for the base race. We have Jesse and Colette for defense. I don't think there's too much they could have done to be honest. But with that said, obviously having a jump pad would have helped quite a bit because again, the whole comp is built around the jump pad. But I mean, Sand's just going crazy on safe. I already have my hypercharge, but me and Zara, like we're stuck defending. We know there is no way that these guys can out damage us. So the only goal here is keep Zar, who is on Jesse, on the Tara, and just have Sans go in over and over and over. And if I can make my way up the map, I'll wake my way up the map. But I'm trying to defend. That's my first priority. I get a hypercharge. We get on safe. You guys know what Colette does. That's game over. So at this point, we only need one more win, and we get put into the finals versus KCP. And that would be really exciting because that would put us for the first ever time this year which is the craziest thing I might ever have to say. For the first time this year, if we win this game, we get put into a spot that goes to LCQ or Worlds. Now, being in that spot doesn't actually matter. Doesn't actually give us any advantage. I mean, if the year ended today, yeah, it would give us an advantage, but it doesn't give us any real advantage. It just, you know, I guess it looks better on the leaderboard. We would still like that spot. It's been a while. It's been a while. And I don't know what it is about STMN and just not being able to do good at the start of the year. But it would be nice to finally, you know, feel what an LCQ spot would feel like, you know. Um, so we really need this game win. We have a great start. But to be honest, they have a great start as well. Patchy base raced the safe and did a ton of damage. We also wasted that Jesse turret there. And I used my Colette super on Patchy, which previously I did to get kills. And I didn't kill him this time. I, I do end up killing him. But it's a fairly even game right now. We don't have the Jesse on the Tara. You guys can see the Tara is just spamming pets on me. Tara is out of pets, so the Tara can't really base race that well. And it's kind of even right now. So in my head, I'm like, okay, we kind of won. But then now they're just totally base racing. I use a super, not my best super. I go down and then they just do a ton of damage. Chino literally Tara supers a safe. Some people might think that's dumb. Like why are you Tara supering a safe? Well, he gets the pet on safe. He does the damage on safe. And then it's kind of like a body block as well. So like Patchy can't believe they won that game. I can't believe they won that game either. Like, in my head, with the amount of reverse sweeps that there's been in North America and EU, just in general, I do not want to give them this game. That is the very last thing I want to do, is give them this game and give them a chance. So I say we are not giving them a chance. This is where we finish them. Czar, follow that damn Tara around. So you guys can see the Tara started left. It switched to the right side to get on my lane. Chuck also does pierce damage, so... Sands took out the pets and you guys can see Chino's just chilling around the middle. He's trying to get some Tara hits I get a lot of nice shots over there on Tupachi and I get the kill. They put some Tara pets on me But Zara's gonna switch over you guys can see I'm on the other lane and Chino's almost out of pets already So we're gonna get a pretty nice pinch going we get the kill and again the goals just don't let them base race So Sands makes a really good play over there getting the kill on 40 HP and then also getting a couple hits on safe as well and doing some damage. So Sands does a really good job over there. I'm telling Zara, I'm like, bro, we are not moving up the map. Like we are staying here. Chino's out of pets. The only the way they won last time and did damage last time was base racing. So, so you guys can see right here, they're totally ignoring Chuck. They do not care about that Chuck. But me and Zara, we are sitting in our spawn, man. Now, if Zara had slow Jesse, this game would have been way easier, but he has the damage jesse or the speed shooting jesse that you would use for something like heist but we don't need any damage we have a colette and we have a, a train chuck whatever you want to call it so that was kind of unneeded that was kind of silly on his part i mean they also don't have a jump pad so it kind of evens out um but i mean things are going well for us again i'm telling czar don't move up i'm like dude you're too high up right now move back move back because again the only way we lose is a base race and we have a chuck we know the chuck is going to finish the safe eventually it's a chuck and they have no way of stopping it so even though i have hypercharge I'm, I'm supering a pet. I literally just supered a, a Tara pet. Like, I'm taking no risks. Just get that out of here. We know that Sands is going to finish the save eventually. He's got, you know, one more dive, and there he goes. And that's going to be the win. That is such a good feeling for us. We get the group hugs. You know, that is such a great feeling. The first time all year, we got an LCQ spot. Now, we go into the finals. And, you know, that's it's a little bit of a different story. We swept the first round. We swept LG. We were up 2-0 against KCP, who beat us in the finals earlier this year. It tasted like sweet, sweet revenge. And it was going to be the perfect month. And then we got reverse swept.
So we ended up losing the month 3-2 in the grand finals. Now, big shout out to KCP. I mean, I feel like a lot of teams have gotten a fairly easy path this year in North America. Uh, especially considering, well, not especially considering, basically because us and LG have faced each other every dang time. One of us has to lose. So, unfortunately, one of us loses. It makes things easier on the other team. But big respects to KCP. They're now two-time monthly final champions, which I think there's only a couple teams around the world that have that title this year. And then, as well as it's the second time they've beaten us, and it's not like they've been, you know, given handouts. They have real wins. So, I mean, big shouts to KCP for the win. But, yeah, it's going to be the win. You guys can see the leaderboard now. We are currently in fourth place by literally one point. So we have qualifiers coming up. Surprise, surprise, we face LG. So if they beat us, they tie everything up in points. And if we win, we have the lead going into the last monthly final. So...